Although we have one topic left in module three, the last one in part D, there is one solving a uh, second order recurrence relation. But that one, I want to delay some time when we have some slot. So I will do that. Uh, that topic uh, relatively less important than this topic, module four. So let's, today we spend all our time try to complete part A of module four. Yeah. In the whole module, uh, we learn divide and conquer approach. Yeah. Before this module, we did a little bit divide and conquer, but here, we want to study this very important problem-solving approach uh, completely in this module. Yeah. Part A, insertion sort. Yeah. Another sort. Yeah. We have learned so far uh, selection sort, bubble sort, Only these two, right? Yeah. Insertion, the third one. Yeah. Insertion, the third one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Same problem yeah, we did before. Yeah. Now, the question here we want to use divide and conquer to solve this problem. Yeah. And, uh, in our module three, recursive algorithm. When we do recursion, actually we did divide and conquer, right? Yeah, we did divide and conquer. So we are familiar with that thinking. Yeah, yeah but here, so we will focus more on this divide and conquer. Yeah. Uh, when we start, we apply the strategy we used many, many times before. Start with a simple case. We do experiments, but when we start, we start with the simplest case first. Yeah. When we solve a general problem, sometimes we can do this way. Yeah. Here, let us try to, you know, Look at this sort problem from a new angle. Yeah. So we forget about our old sorts. Yeah. So we look at this question, but this time we use a new angle to view it. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. So we use this strategy start with a simple case, then we grow the data size gradually. Grow the data size. Grow, okay? Grow. That's the opposite of divide, right? Divide, you make the size smaller. The opposite way, then you grow the size. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, every time we increase the size by one, if you view from the opposite way, when we do divide and conquer, we reduce the problem size by one. Yeah. Two opposite directions. Yeah. Growing direction, every time you increase the problem size by one. Reduction direction, you divide. So you chop, you chop the problem only chop away the last element to reduce the problem size by one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then you need to look at the relationship between two adjacent cases. Yeah. So when you add a new element, and before you add that element, so what's the relationship? You need to 
Look at that. Yeah. So that idea, we did a several examples in our recursive algorithm. Yeah. Remember the gap, right? So in recursive algorithm, we have the problem of the current size, problem of the previous size, then we need to fix that gap. There is a gap. Yeah. Here, that's the gap part. Yeah. The gap part between two adjacent cases. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's do the work, working on the problem size. Yeah. Let's use diagram to understand the whole process. Yeah. When we start, let's start with one element. So this element only has one, this array only has one element. Then it's ordered, you do not need to sort. It is already ordered. Okay, yeah. So we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Next, growing the problem size, right? So we, here, we want to grow the problem size. When you grow the problem size, you add a new element. A1 is the new element. When a new element is added into currently, this is ordered array. So you add a new element in an ordered array. How much work you need to do in order to make all the elements ordered. All the elements ordered after you add a new element. Here you need to do comparison, right? You compare A1 with A0. If A1 greater than A0, then, you know, you need to put A1 after A0. Otherwise, Put A1 before A0, yeah, and so on, yeah, things like that. That means after one comparison, you get all the elements ordered. Yeah. So let us assume A0, A1 ordered. Yeah. So this two element array is ordered. Ordered array. Yeah. Next step we need to add another new element, A2. How to add a new element, A2, into an ordered array? A0, A1, ordered array. Yeah. How many comparisons you need to do? Yeah, here. You need to do yeah, a few comparisons, right? Yeah. After a few comparisons, you get all these three elements ordered. Yeah. Then you keep doing this kind of operations. Keep doing. Yeah. yeah. The general case, you have a currently ordered array with k elements from A0 through a k minus one ordered. And you need to add a new element a k into an ordered array and we want to make the all the elements ordered. Yeah. So that process okay, keep doing yeah. until you get all the elements ordered. Then you solve the problem. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Okay, yeah, all right. So here, add a new element to a currently sorted array to make it sorted. That's the general idea, solving this problem. Yeah. All right. So now, so if we look at this whole process, yeah. What we are doing here, insert an element in a, a sorted array 
at the right position. You don't know the position, right? But you need to do some do some comparisons to find the right position. Then you insert that element at the right position. That's the general operation. Yeah. And in this operation, we call it insertion operation. Yeah. So that's the main operation in this algorithm. Yeah. Next, we need to study this insertion operation. Yeah. How to do the insertion? Yeah. So let's look at the detail. Detail work for this insertion operation. Yeah. All right. Shift elements for insertion here. Because we know when we have an array of elements, actually those elements occupy locations in main memory. And a, a sequence of consecutive locations in main memory, right? Yeah. So based on our understanding, how an array is stored in main memory. Yeah. An array occupies consecutive locations in main memory. Yeah. That's how it is stored. Yeah. Now, when we do insertion, we need to you know, maintain our elements in array in consecutive locations. Yeah. So we, we, we cannot break that structure. We need to keep that structure. Consecutive locations in main memory, that structure. Yeah. All right. So now we need to do shift operations. In order to maintain consecutive locations in main memory, we need to do a few shift operations. Yeah. So let, let me use this diagram to e explain how do we do that shift operation. This is the general insertion operation. Yeah. We need to insert this AK element into an ordered array. But that ordered array, the elements in that array occupy consecutive locations in main memory. Yeah. All right. Now we need to do two things in order to insert a new element into an ordered array. First, we need to find the right location, right? Where to do the insertion? Find the right place. Second, we need to make arrangements. That location, we need to make it vacant. Yeah, because that location, before we do the insertion, it is occupied, right? If some other element already occupies that location, we cannot do the insertion. So we need to make it vacant. And the shift elements, some of the elements to other locations to leave that location empty, then we can do the insertion. Yeah. So let's implement that idea. Yeah. All right. So when we start yeah. this location, this location originally, AK is stored there. Okay? AK. Originally, AK is stored here. Yeah. But when we do insertion, we plan to move this AK element to some other place. Yeah. So we, we, we need to make this location empty first. AK, we can move to a temporary location. AK, yeah, because it is pending. The status of AK is pending. Yeah. We need, need to 
allocated to a new location. Yeah. So we move it to a temporary location, AK. Yeah. Then, after we move AK to a temporary location, then this place is empty, right? So we can move other elements to this empty location. Yeah. In main memory. You can, the location here, in main memory. Yeah. All right. Let's assume this place will be the right position for AK element. Yeah. There must be some right position, right, for AK. Eventually, eventually we can find its right position. Yeah. So let's assume in that arrow, arrow place. Yeah. Now, we do shifting. Okay. We shift element one by one, to the right, to its right adjacent location. Right adjacent location. All right. Yeah. So after we lift AK element to a temporary location, yeah. the first comparison, we compare AK with AK minus 1. Yeah. So here, we assume AK minus 1 is larger than AK, that AK minus 1 should go to its right adjacent location by shift, shift operation, okay? Shift to the right, yeah, yeah. Then, AK minus two, yeah. well, we need to compare AK with AK minus two. Here, we also assume AK minus two is greater than AK, so, because after AK minus one, is shifted to its right at the adjacent location, this place is empty. Yeah. So then we can shift AK minus 2 to its right at the adjacent location, and so on. Okay? Keep doing that until we reach a point which corresponds to the right position of a K. Yeah, because if you come if you compare to the next one, if you compare AI and AK, you will get AI less than or equal to AK. Let's assume the next comparison would give us AI less than AK, less than equal. Equal, we also include that. Equal. less than equal to AK, then that means this is the right location, okay? This is the right location. And it is already empty. This place already empty. Yeah. Yeah. So we just drop AK to that empty location. Drop it, yeah. So here in this diagram, because AK minus 1 already shifted to its right adjacent location. Yeah. Then, this location is empty. So we can drop AK to this location. Yeah. That, in that way, we complete insertion. That's a typical insertion operation. Okay, yeah, one insertion operation. If you can do one insertion op operation, next time when you have a new element, AK plus one, then you do the same thing. You do the same thing. Yeah. And when you do comparison, you always start from the rightmost element in the ordered array. Rightmost element in the ordered array. Then do shifting operation. Shift to the right. It's right at adjacent location. Yeah. Then with this insertion operation, if you do it from the smallest 
size problem size size one when you start size one then you grow then at the end size n at the end you insert all the elements in the given array that's the insertion sort how about that this idea very simple right yeah. very simple yeah here you may argue because here we increase the problem sizes every time by one yeah. you may feel not directly related to divine and conquer yes actually it is related to divine and conquer because if you look at, can in a backward way yeah. the opposite view of that increasing the problem sizes that's the size reduction every time you reduce the problem by size by one that's divide and conquer yeah yeah so we still we treat yeah, problem solving approach like this divide and conquer yeah all right yeah number of yeah, so here let's count yeah number of operations yeah. because when you do shift operation other than comparison operation you also do shift operation shift operation basically assignments right yeah. value assignments yeah. so how many assignments do we need to do for one insertion yeah. all right here we can use asymptotic notation uh, average yeah so here we consider the average case now because you have the best case you have worst case best case is one one comparison one assignment yep. after one assignment you're done okay yeah. even even no assignment right because if you do not if you do not copy a k to a temporary location you just leave a k in its original place only only when you need to move AK minus one, then, then you copy AK to the temporary location. If you do not need to move for the best case, when you do first comparison, AK is greater than AK minus one, then you do not need to do anything. Just leave it there. That's the best case, right? Yeah. That's the best case. You need to do one comparison, but you do not need to do any uh, assignment operation that's the best case the worst case you need to do and uh, you need to do k comparisons and you need to also do k assignments k shifts k assignments uh, right k assignments yeah yeah but the last one when you drop the uh, ak you need another assignment. Yeah. So, k plus one, k plus one. Yeah. Yeah. If you count, yeah, some some students may argue if you count when you copy k, a k to the temporary location, that's another another assignment. Yeah. So that will be k plus two. Yeah. Because when you copy a k to the temporary location, then at the end copy a k to the its destination location. So for AK, you need to do two copy, right? Two assignments. Yeah. Anyway, so so that's the number related to AK. Yeah. AK plus two from zero to AK plus two. Yeah. If we look at a comparison, then it's easy. Comparison number. Comparison one comparison. Best case. Worst case K comparisons one and a k but if you take average 
average somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah. The average, you can use 1 plus k divided by 2. Average. Yeah, average. Yeah. Because the relationship is linear, right? Yeah. So, you know, evenly distributed. It's so linear. Yeah. Then you can do average like that. Yeah. In general, you cannot do average. So if, uh, if the, you know, number of comparisons is not in that linear way, you know, not linear, but in, in a curve way, yeah, some curve, okay? Then you cannot use this 1 plus k over 2. Yeah. Here, because each case, one fewer than, that one, one more than the previous one, okay? The best case is one comparison, second best are two comparisons, next best case, third comparisons, and so on. So then, you know, you can take the average of those numbers, so you get this 1 plus k over 2. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But here we use asymptote notation, big theta of k. Yeah. Some constant multiply k. Constant here, the constant is 2 constant. Uh, 1 half constant. The constant is 1 half constant times k. Yeah. All right. Next topic, 8.2, implementation of insertion sort. Now, so let's look at the whole insertion sort. 8.1, actually we already, we get an idea of insertion sort. So 8.2, so we want to, you know, also do the analysis. Also we want to count how many comparisons do we need to complete insertion operation? The best case, the worst case, and the average case. Three cases for insertion sort. Yeah. Estimate efficiency. Yeah. Compare and shift operations. Yeah. We need to do the comparison and the shift. Yeah. But here we want to focus on comparison. All right. So the typical operation like like this. All right. The worst case efficiency. Let's look at the worst case efficiency. Yeah. When we insert the second element, we need a one comparison, right? Second element, worst case. Only one. You can insert a one into that A0 ordered array only containing A0. One comparison. Next one, when you insert A2, you need to do two. Two comparisons. A0, A1 for the worst case, and so on. Okay. The last one, when you insert A n minus 1, the last one, you need to do n minus 1 comparisons. Yeah. Because in that ordered array, there are n minus 1 elements in that ordered array. Yeah. And uh, you insert the last element in that ordered array. So n minus 1 comparisons for the worst case. Yeah. Adding up these numbers by our summation formula you get this many comparisons. One half times n times n minus one. This is the worst case. Okay? Worst case if you use the asymptotic notation big theta of n squared. Big theta of n squared. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Because you look at the dominant term it's coefficient one half. One half. When you use asymptotic notation, so you ignore that leading coefficient one half. Yeah. 
crap. All right. That's the worst case. All right, yeah. Best case efficiency. Now, what is the best case? For the best case, every time when you insert a new element, the minimum number of comparison you need to do, one comparison. After you make your first comparison, the current element is greater than the rightmost element, the value of the rightmost element. Then you're done. So one compar comparison, you can find the right location of the current element. So for each insertion, you only do one, one comparison. And you need to do insertion m minus one time, times. Because the first time you do not need to do insertion. The first time, you just, one element, you drop it. You drop the first element into the destination array. You do not need to do any comparison. Yeah. After the first element, the remaining elements, each element you need to do one comparison for the best case. So the best case total number of comparison you need to do n minus one. If you use the asymptotic notation, that is big theta of n. Now you do the comparison. The worst case, big theta of n squared, best case of big theta of n. You can see the difference is so big. The difference from n squared to n, that, that change is big. Yeah. So this is, this observation tells us a very important property. So the best case of the insertion sort is very fast. The, yeah, this tells us, yeah, because this is very fast. That means if your input, for what input you get the best case? Yeah. So let's look at this question. For what input you get the best case for the insertion sort? an array that is already ordered. For an ordered array, you get the best case. For an ordered array, because every time when you insert the last element into the current ordered array, you do only one comparison. So for an ordered array, so the best case corresponds to an ordered array. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that here you get the most important property of the insertion sort. Its best case is very fast. Big theta of n. Later you will see, yeah, we will learn many other sorts and you will see none of the other sorts can do as fast as insertion sort for the best case. Yeah. The best case for other sorts much slower than this one. But the, but the best case, okay, yeah, so that's the most prominent property of the insertion sort, yeah. All right, average case, average case, yeah, so for each insertion operation, you can use the average number of comparisons, one half of the K, right, yeah, 
So one half of the k average. Yeah. All right. So there is this one half coefficient you need to multiply to k. Yeah. All right. So then, because these numbers are k, okay? These numbers are the k numbers. Yeah. K, you take these values. Yeah. Then, for the average case, you multiply one half to all these numbers and add them up. Then, what do you get? You need to multiply one half to this num worst case expression. So you get an average case. Yeah. So average case still in the big theta of n squared, but you know it's about one fourth n squared. Another one half. One fourth of n squared. Yeah. The dominant term. Yeah. That's the average case. All right. Yeah. So here, yeah, you know. Yeah. So if you want to calculate rigorously, yeah, pretty much, uh, you will get the same result. Yeah. All right. Then conclusion. So now, this insertion sort. This is our third sort algorithm third third one yeah conclusion yeah remember i mentioned that that prominent property yeah, of the insertion so we want to use that property so in our real world situ situation yeah when you have some special situation then you can use this insertion sort. So what's that special situation? Yeah. If the given array is almost sorted, almost sorted, yeah, then the insertion sort is a good choice for sorting. So what do you mean almost sorted? Yeah. That here, let me use this line segment representing the given array. When we say it is almost sorted, then there are only some scattered locations. Yeah. The data in these scattered circles, these places, are not ordered. Yeah. Other than these scattered locations, all the remaining places, the data ordered. So that's what we mean, almost sorted. If you have the data like this, you need to sort the whole array, then the fastest algorithm you, you can get yeah, by, by that special property of the insertion sort. Insertion sort is the best. Insertion sort, if you want to fix the problem here, you need to use big theta of n. Big theta of n. So that's very fast. Okay? Yeah. So that's very fast. Yeah. So you by the insertion sort, you can sort the data with this property. Yeah, you need to make sure the data follows this property. Okay? Yeah. So then, the best, you can enjoy the best case of the insertion sort. Big theta of n. Yeah. So that's the, you know, if you know this fact, this property, yeah. So when you have this situation in the real world, yeah. you can do much faster. Yeah. If you apply other sorts, yeah. later we have several other sorts. If you apply other sorts, 
much slower than this one. Yeah. Um, for sorting a completely unordered array, uh, what would be your recommendation for the best time complexity to sort? Complex, yeah, so here, all right. So first, let me give a conclusion. Quick sort, we will learn quick sort, yeah. But quick sort, but what do you said, the best complexity, complexity-wise, there are several of the same. So the merge sort, heap sort, quick sort, they have the same complexity, even the same complexity, but the leading coefficient is different. Yeah, we know some complexity, you need to multiply larger coefficient smaller coefficient yeah overall quick sort is the fastest and do you know off the top of your head the like big o notation of quick sort n log n n log n all right quick sort n log n yeah quick sort merge sort heap sort all these three n log n yeah but quick sort is overall the fastest But if yeah, even the quick sort, you bring up the quick sort for given arrays almost sorted, the quick sort is not the best. Actually, that correspond for quick sort, it's the worst case. It's not the best case. It's the worst case. Yeah. If for this kind of data, if you apply quick sort, you will get close to n squared. Very, very bad. Yeah, not close. Yeah, not, not very close to this. Even not close to its average case. Yeah. So yeah, we will learn that. Part D, part D of this module, we will learn quick sort. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's the conclusion of the inversion sort. So here you can see that I can pop you know, answer another question I answered before. Why we need to learn so many different sorts, right? Why we need to learn so many different sorts? Here you can see, for different situations, you can pick the best sort, right? Yeah? Sometimes, for some special situation, this sort is better. For some other situations, you know, a different sort is better, right? Yeah, so quick sort. So this situation, the quick sort is the worst, <laughs> not the best. Okay, yeah. All right. Then a point three example. Yeah. So now I want to apply the idea of insertion sort to solve two special problems. Yeah. The first one sort four element array, and the second one sort five element array. And the second one, sort five element array. Actually, this one is ve very hard. Yeah. This one is, is very hard. Yeah. 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 But here, uh, we try to use the, you know, an algorithm that is, you know, partially, yeah. That related to related to the to the insertion sort, but partially related to the insertion sort. Yeah. All right. Yeah. First, let's look at the how to sort four element array. Yeah. Given four elements, what is the minimum number of comparisons you need to use? So the, the question, yeah. given four elements of it, x1, x2, x3, x4, the goal Minimum 
number of comparisons. to sort it. Okay? All right. But here, because we have the background of the insertion sort, so we borrow the idea of the insertion sort. Yeah. yeah. Because when the element, the number of elements, the problem size is relatively small. Here, the, the problem size n equals 4 n equals 4 so the size is small then insertion source is pretty good okay. but when the size becomes larger and larger then the insertion source will be slower and slower. Okay. So the size, when size is relatively small, the inversion sort compared with other sorts, okay, still pretty good. Yeah. All right, so here, the size is very small, so we can do the insertion. Yeah. The first element, x1, you do not need to do anything, right? Yeah. So first, when you process x0, No comparison, right? So zero comparison. First step. Second step, you need to insert x1 into this ordered array. One comparison, right? Yeah. So this, the, the second round. Here we do the worst case, yeah. because when you solve a general problem, yeah, we always we work on the worst case, because in that way we can take care of all the cases. If you take care of the worst case, you take care of all the cases. Otherwise, if you do, if you work on less than the worst case, yeah, some, you know, not the worst case, then you do not take care of all the possible cases. Yeah. All right. So here, worst case, to get a one sorted, just need one comparison. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next one. It's a, yeah, all right, sorry. I use A0 because, uh, you know, that one, I, I start with A1, okay? So here, A2, A3, right? Uh, sorry, A1, A2. This one, A1, A2. But the next one, we need to insert A3 into this ordered array, right? To get new ordered array two more right two more comparisons okay two more comparisons yeah. and uh, one plus two so we use three comparisons We get the first three elements ordered. First three elements ordered. Now, the last step, we need to make x4, insert x4 into the ordered array. So our last step, this time we need to insert x4 into an ordered array with minimum number of comparisons. Okay? With minimum number 
of comparisons. Here, we want to modify the original insertion operation. We want to modify a little bit. Okay? Because if we use the if we use the original insertion operation, we need to make three comparisons for the worst case, right? Yeah. Because we need to compare X4 with all these three elements. Okay? Then, then, that's not the best you can do. Now, we can modify our last step. Now, to do that, here, let me draw this diagram. Okay? All right. Because we already, we get these three elements. Order, x1, x2, x3. Yeah, order. Here. We have x4, we want to use the minimum number comparison to get x4 inserted here. The best way we compare x4, the first comparison with x2. The middle, the element in the middle first. The binary search away. Yeah. You do not compare with the last one. In the last one, you need to compare all three. But when you compare with the middle one, if x4 is less than x, yeah, here we can assume distinct elements. Yeah. Otherwise, our discussion, you know, for convenience, distinct elements. Okay? All right. If x4 is less than x2, then a second comparison compare x4 with x1. Okay? But if x4 is greater than x2, your second comparison compare x4 with x3. Okay? In that way, you only need two more comparisons. To insert x4, you only need two more comparisons. Then, what's the total? Total 3 plus 2 equals 5 comparisons. Yeah. So in this way, you can use 5 comparisons to sort four element array five comparisons okay yeah and with that modification you can save one comparison if you do not compare x4 with the middle element first we need a six comparisons for the worst case here we save one so we only need a five comparisons if you compare x4 with the middle element in that ordered array just uh, similar to what you do by the binary search in our module b next class we will learn binary search yeah. but here we use that idea binary search idea yeah all right and this five comparisons here, you know, how to use five comparisons to sort four element array. The next question is, is this the best you can do? That means, is it possible to use four comparisons to sort four element array? Is it the best you can do? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Here, it looks it's not that easy to answer this question, right? Yeah. Is it possible to use full comparison? Yeah. If you try, it's very likely you will fail. Very likely you will fail. Yeah. 
Later, we can show five comparison is the best you can do. That is the optimal sorting algorithm to sort four element array is five comparison. Later, we will show that. It's optimal. Five comparison is the best. You cannot do better than that. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I will I will show you how to get that result. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's how to sort four element array with five comparisons. Next, how to sort five element array. Yeah. It's another question. Very challenging question. Sort five element array x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. Yeah. Yeah. And this problem very, very hard. Very hard. Okay? Yeah. So here, I can tell you the, the final answer. The final answer, you can sort by seven comparisons. By seven comparisons. And then later you will see the seven comparison is the best you can do, optimal. This ag algorithm is optimal. You cannot do better than that. So that means nobody can use six comparisons to sort five element array for the worst case. For the worst case, okay? Yeah. Because we always we target the worst case. Yeah. All right. So here I have a few minutes. Uh, let me try to. Yeah, I don't know if I have enough time. Yeah. Let, let me try to do as much as, as I can. Okay, all right. First, preparation step. Yeah. So when we solve it, the first round, we do preparation. Okay. Yeah. Pre prepare, pre preparation. Okay. Yeah. Preparation, we use the tournament method. Tournament method. Okay. Yeah. All right. Also, we pair x one, x two, do one comparison. X three, x four, second pair. X5, no pair, okay? So we leave X5 aside. Yeah. So comparison one, comparison two, okay? Yeah. And we can assume A1 is the winner, or X1 winner, X3 is the winner. Then another round, comparison, and we can assume X1 the winner, that's the comparison three, okay? So the first compare three com first three comparisons, we run the tournament method on the first four elements, and what do we get after first three comparisons? We want to summarize the information from the first three comparisons. Here I use diagram to represent the relationship among these four elements. Yeah. X1, largest, then X1, larger than X3, X1, larger than, uh, X3, larger than X4. I use this diagram, okay? Yeah. So, based on the position, the height of the position, levels, you can see which one larger, which one smaller. Also, X1 greater than X2. Yeah. 
So after the first three comparisons, you get this much information. Yeah. All right. Then next round. Next round. You have X five here. Okay. X five. So for the next comparison, next comparison, which element you want to compare with X five? Look at the diagram here. Which element you want to compare with X five? Based on your experience so far. Good. X three. Yeah. You have very good impression. Yeah. Right. X three. Yeah. Why X three? Yeah. Here. Why X three? Yeah. Here. Let me. Here, from here you can see the longest ordered chain. This is the longest ordered chain because these three elements are in order. You have a chain, and it, although there is another chain here, right? This is another ordered chain, right? Yeah, but that chain, the length is two. Two elements in that chain. The longest one, you have three elements in the chain. So now you look at the longest ordered chain, and when you do comparison, you compare the element with the middle element in the longest ordered chain. Okay, in that way, you know, you can get the most information you need. Okay, yeah. So comparison number four, compare x three and x five. They have two cases, right? Yeah. Here we also assume distinct elements. Distinct elements, okay, for convenience. Then, after that comparison, there are two possible cases we need to consider. Two possible cases: one, x five greater than x three. Yeah. There are two possible cases. One is x five greater than x three. Another one x five less than x three. Okay, all right. For x five greater than x three, then you change your diagram to this x one, x three, x four. X two, X five, like that. Okay. Yeah. Then, sorry, X five less than X three. So the diagram becomes this: X one, X three, X four. X two, X five. Okay, you have these two cases. All right. Yeah. So you use you you use up four comparisons. The next step, can you use three more comparisons to get these elements sorted? Three more comparisons. We run out of time. Yeah. So you can try a little bit by yourself. Along this direction, next time when you come, we complete the solution. Okay, we complete solution next time. Yeah. So you can think about it. Okay, if you like three more comparison, we want to get it sorted in these two cases. Then it because after I give you this direction, it won't be that hard. Okay, you can try. If you cannot solve it, then at the beginning of the next class, I will show you the solution. All right.